Good evening, everyone. Uh, hi, Rahul. Yes, sir. Hi. I think uh, the broadcast has started, but the attendees are very few. So uh, we can wait for another five ten minutes. Yeah, it's not six minutes.
should we start rahul yeah we can start hello yeah we can start okay okay so good evening everyone i hope you enjoyed the session so the rahul it's a request please start for today's session all right Hello guys, so welcome to the session. And today we are going to talk about. Yesterday we quickly discussed about some of the visualizations using Cmon. Today we'll spend some more time on the data frames. That means we'll spend some time on uh, Pandas package because, as you know, right, Pandas is the package which is very much useful for us on a day-to-day -day work. and that is the reason why i am going with pandas a lot because in your day to day work you will use this particular package for data analysis analysis a lot so here are here some of the uh, some of the <clears throat> i would say concepts we will discuss which will have all the way of updating the data which you are getting from the source for example let's say i have a data frame and let me do one thing let me create one data frame so that the understanding will be much better so let's say i have this data frame and here i have df now i can see here i have two columns which is narendra pratap singh and uh, the location is bhopal mp my requirement is that i want to split this name into three columns basically my first name will be narendra the middle name will be pratap and the last name will be singh right so basically i want to break this data so what i'll do is i'll create a function so df dot which column i am interested in in the name column i want to do the split so str dot split and give the space expand equal to true now you can see that here in this command the data is broken down into three columns here i have narendra pratap and singh but earlier if you see the data which i have is basically a single column narendra pratap singh and i break down into three columns so this you may require <clears throat> maybe in the source you are getting multiple uh, multiple columns and like single column and you want to break into multiple columns those those type of scenarios will definitely be helpful same way for example here you can see i have bhopal comma mp now here bhopal is city and mp is the state and i want to break this also and here the separator is comma bhopal comma mp the separator is comma so what i will do is i will do the same story and i what i want i want to create the multiple columns for the location field so everything remains the same df dot location dot str dot split 
and here my separator is comma expand equal to true you can see that i have two columns as well coming in but as of now you see in the original data plane the columns did not split here i am just running the command but what i want is i want this data in the original data frame i want to append it basically so what i'll do i'll give my first name so my first column is first name then middle name then last name is equal to i'll write this logic this logic and now when i execute this you can see that in my data frame you can see a uh, new three columns coming in was first name middle name and the last name now same way i want to do for the other column as well city and state so what i'll do i'll have city and i have state is equal to i'll write the same logic which is this one and execute now you can see i have a data frame and it consists of now all the columns i have name location first name middle name last name city and state is this like a limited function in ms ms excel i am not very much expert in ms excel so i cannot compare excel with python i have limited knowledge on excel right my experience was into databases more not in excel now here there is one command which is very interesting command is known as i lock index location yesterday in the class we saw that if i am interested in selecting any column which is i am interested in for example let's say i am interested in name i am interested in middle name and i am interested in state then how will i fetch that i will pass double square bracket right name middle name and state right i will get the corresponding details that we are aware of but is there any other way to do the same operation and the answer is yes the other way is using i lock i lock is nothing but index location now can you guys tell me what is the index of name what is the index of middle name what is the index of state can you guys tell me what is the index of name middle name and state come on guys so name is zero indexation starts with zero 1 2 3 middle name is 3 4 5 6 state is 6 so 0 3 6 right so can i say i am interested in the 06 0 3 6 column so how will i fetch that i will write df dot i lock square bracket colon as of now i am not passing any number i am just passing colon when i execute this i will not get any difference 
it is giving me the same output but now if i make changes colon comma bracket 0 comma 3 comma 6 and now when i will execute i'll get the columns which we are interested in so after the comma the numbers which you are passing are actually the index number of that columns suppose i am interested in column number 0 1 2 so in that case i will write i am interested in 0 1 2 i am interested in consecutive columns so dot i lock colon comma 1 or in fact bracket is also not required 1 colon 3 sorry 0 colon 3 my bad 0 colon 3 0 1 2 will come in 3 will not come in 3 will not participate okay so if i have a consecutive column you can very well call through this colon but if i have like any random columns then we can give the random numbers which we are interested in same way before comma there is one more colon now what this colon means this colon is for the rows there are three rows zero one two I am interested in 1 and 2. I will write square bracket 1, comma 2. Or I can write removing this square bracket 1, colon 3. That is also fine. Suppose I am looking for 0 and 2. Then we can pass in a square bracket. 0 and 2. Are you understanding this slicing, all of you? So, normally we use this for slicing the data frame, which is more powerful. Now, here, if I want to, con now, can I say it's a data frame? The output which you are getting is a data frame. Because when we check the type, it's a data frame, right? It's a data frame. But I want to convert this to an array. I want to convert this output to an array. I will write dot values. Dot values will help me to convert the data frame to an array. Let's execute and check. You can see that it is no longer a data frame. It is an array now. Yes, if I want all the rows, all the columns, then we will just pass colon in between. That's it. All right. So this is a way where I can basically do the slicing which is like one of the most popular way we have why to convert to array it depends on the scenario for example let's say i want to do some mathematical calculations then i may go with array and convert that to an array to make things faster Now we can let, let me use this data set, the data set which we used in the last class tips.
now what i want is i want the columns which are uh, characters the sex column is a character smoker column is a character day column is a character and time column is a character character means the categorical data we can check that so dot info i will get the information so sex column smoker column day column and time column are characters and this is what i am looking for this is what i am looking for rest of the columns i don't know so here i can do bf dot select d types include object you see here all the object column is coming in sex smoker day and time so it will give me all the categorical data let's say i'm looking for float you can see i am getting data let's say i am looking for float and integer you can see i am getting float and integer both so that is how we can go for or let's say in place of include i can write exclude as well it will exclude float and integer and it will give me categorical data right so basically based on the data type it is actually fetching out the column now i want to do, i want to do group by i think we did group by again uh, in the last class also but let's do it again i have my data frame i want to know how many females and how many males total bill are i want to know the total bill of females i want to know the total bill of males now will i do that tips dot i can say df dot group by i want to group by sex dot aggregation i will pass a dictionary total bill colon np dot sum i have to import numpy package also import numpy as np you can see that i am getting the aggregated total bill for female and male i can do some calculations as well i think you will require these types of calculations a lot so let's see what all calculations can be done what i am looking for is in my data frame i have this data frame and the total bill of this guy is 16.99 and he is uh, she is female i want to know what is the total percentage she is contributing so that is 16.99 divided by 1570.95 into 100 that is what we are looking for so what i'll do is first of all i will use this female data here and i will put this here like in i will create a new column and in this new column what i will do is i will actually put the value this value i'll put it here for all the rows here 15570 will come here 3256 will come like that so for all the rows i'll put the value and for that how will i do that i will run a command first of all let's say total sales is equal to uh, df dot group by group by sex dot 
टोटल बिल डॉट ट्रांसफॉर्म सम now what will happen if you check my total sales you can see that based on the record it is giving me the value the first guy was female second one was male so corresponding values coming in you can check that so let's say i have my uh, data frame you can see that the first one is the female the number is 1570 and that is what for female so basically you see the repeated value repeated value based on the gender if it is a female then it will be 1570 if it is a male then 3256 now this particular column total sales i want to add in my original data frame this is my original data frame here i will create a total sales column and i will say equal to total sales now what will happen you can see in my original data frame a new column is coming in name as total sales which is 157 1570.95 for female and 3256 for male now what i want to do is i want to find the percentage of total so what i will do i'll create a new column name as percentage of total is equal to i will create a calculated field df dot total bill divided by df dot total sales multiply by hundred and now let me execute this you can see some calculation is happening and now it's done let me open the data frame you can see that now I am getting the percentage contribution from individuals on the total sales. based on the gender so uh, she contributed 16.99 divided by 1570.95 into 100 that comes out to be 1.08 we can check that also 16.99 divided by 1570.95 the value which we are getting is 1.0815 perfect this looks perfectly fine and that is what we are getting here also so that is how you can able to fetch out and do the calculation basically we use transform because i wanted the i can say column same as my original data frame so that i can what do you say uh, concat that that's why we use transform because i wanted to create this structure which will have all the bill details for all the genders for every row that's why i used last one there is something like a pivot also which we can do let me show you for example tips dot or my data frame name is df dot group by it's in the tips data so sex comma day dot total bill dot mean dot unstack unstack is basically making the output as a cross table cross tab so you can see that you will get this particular output here it is saying that on friday female the average uh, bill was this one on saturday female the average bill is this one on sunday male the average bill is this one like that so this is like one way of doing the pivoting there is one more way which we can go for this is like unstack there is one more way df dot pivot table i can use directly pivot table as well i will say that in index i am looking for sex and in columns i am looking for day in values i am looking for total bill 
and then i want to say i am looking for a mean right so comma aggregation function is mean and now when i execute this you can see that this is also one way of creating a pivot table you can see that here what i am trying to say is index equal to sex so basically this is my index so index is equal to sex male female columns name equal to day so these are my column names friday saturday sunday and thursday and the values which you want the values which you want should be total bill total bill mean bill of uh, mean of my total bill that is what you are getting now this is exactly same as this one there is no difference you can either go with this option or you can you can go with this option as well so here we are pivoting which i think in excel also you guys can now let's say i'm not sure whether this is your use case or not but let's say i have a data in multiple files let's say i'll create i'll create a folder and here i will create excel file let's say i have this tips data only i'll put that here and what i will do is i'll create multiple files for example let's say here i have here i have eight records or let me do one thing let me copy this also this is my tips one tips two and tips three i'll not make any change what i'll do i'll just show you that in my tips data in tips data frame i have how many records i have 244 records okay. now let's assume that this file consists of different data this file consists of different data this file consists of different data let's assume obviously the data is same but as of now let's assume that the data is different so basically in your scenario maybe your files are coming from different location but the structures are same and you want to read all the files together because you want to do some analysis on the single data the data which you are getting so basically in a single command i want to run i want to run a, a basically a code which will help me to import all the three files together i don't have to run uh, multiple commands for multiple files i'll just run one command and all the three files will be coming in single data frame now how will i do that i'll first change the working directory so let's say i am changing my working directory so import os os is already imported i guess so i'll just os dot chdir and i'll pass the value now here if you see pd dot read csv tips you will see multiple tip files are there tips 1 tips 2 tips 3 but i don't want to read it one by one i want to read it all together so there is a package called glob glob may not be there in your machine you have to install glob going by anaconda prompt here you have to write install pip install glob 
like this you can install the package i think it's not there in your machine if i check in pip list in my machine it should be there that's why it executed so g g is where glob so once you install glob automatically it will install glob too right so don't worry about that you can install packages from here also exclamation pip install glob you can do like this also exclamation pip install glob you don't have to go to anaconda prompt also i ran this glob and now what i will do i will use a sorted command glob and tips star dot csv tips star dot csv now when i check my sample you can see that here i have all the three files coming in tips star means what my file names are of same name right tips one tips two tips three so i'm saying in that folder if you have all the files with the same name fetch out all tips star dot csv now this is a list tips one dot csv tips two dot csv tips three dot csv it's a list and when we have a list and i want to read one by one we prefer to go with for loop and there is a command called concat pd dot concat concat is helping me to put a table below another table something like a union union is nothing but suppose i have a table the same table structure is again for example let's say my business is running in multiple locations and i am maintaining the data for my all the locations the structure is same the structure of the tables are same for example let's say i have a uh, student details and here i have student id student name let me make it better so here is the here is the table let's say my business is in gurgaon and mumbai so i have student id student name and marks this table is coming from gurgaon i have one more table exactly same where i have again student id student name and marks this is coming from mumbai now what i'll do is i want a single table which will have both the data so what i'll do i'll put this table below this table so that i'll have a entire data here i have gurgaon data here i have mumbai data and now i can anal analyze this entire data and this process is known as union in sql language it is known as union in python language it is known as concat so now what i want obviously my tips 1 tips 2 tips 3 are all uh, uh, like all of are of same data type like same column names there is no difference so pd dot concat and then i will say i want to read the csv pd dot read csv file for file in sample so my for loop will run now my for loop what it will do it will take this file value from the sample one by one the first value is tips1 dot csv second value is tips2 dot csv and third value is tips3 dot csv so basically here what's happening pd dot read csv file the file value is changing tips1 dot csv tips2 dot csv and tips 3.csv on my one and pd.concat will put all one below another right so let's run this and see what happens 
there are 244 records in one of the tables that means in three table there will be 244 multiply by three so there should be 732 records if my multiplication is correct then let's see that if you go down you can see here i have, I have 732 records so basically what happened here is that it read all the data from all the three files and giving me a single table all right so that is how we can able to run this glob is doing nothing it is reading the same type of a file and putting in in a list tips star dot csv So that is how it works. Now what I want is I want to export this. I want, now what I did, I took the data from three files. Let's say I, I did some calculation out here. Let, let's say, let's, let's do some calculation. So DF is equal to so now if you see my df df consists of all the three files and let me do some calculation maybe this calculation will do total sales one okay let's do this one i have this total sales and i'll put a new column of total sales let me check my df now so you see the total sales coming in then i will find the percentage of total as well okay so here is the data we have now i want to put this in a excel file or csv file whatever you want so df dot to excel let me give the file name as tips underscore final dot xlsx and execute in my current working directory this file should be there in my current working directory this file should be there let me open this you can see that i have the data with me right so that is how you can export the data as well i think this we saw in previous class also but this is how we can do it you can see i have all the 732 records 732 all right so that is how you can do that so i hope this will be useful if or there are chances that you may have multiple files and multiple files you may be dealing with of same type and you can do this type of logic building as well one more interesting thing i want to show you and this is like I was amazed when I saw that. Like, never thought of that this can happen. I have this tip data. Without importing this file, I want to put that in. Python. Let's say I want to import this much of data. Control C. And then I'll go here in my Python and I will write PD dot read clipboard and control enter. 
you can see that i have the data with us from 16.99 till 10.27 let's see 16.99 to 10.27 are you understanding it so basically it is doing the clipboard reading for example let's say i am copying the data from here to here now in that case column names will not come right here column names will not come let me go ahead and run the clipboard again now you can see that column names are not coming in my first column is a value actually but this is not what i want i want that i should have a column name so in that case i will say read clipboard separator is my comma separator so it's a comma separator csv file right so comma separator name is equal to let's say total bill next column was tip then it was the sex then it was uh, smoker then it was time then it was sorry day then time then size and obviously i have to copy the excel file again so let me copy this and now let's see whether it is working or not and probably something is wrong did i miss anything name comma pd dot read clipboard okay i think what we can do is read clipboard separator name names it should be names my man yeah now it is fine okay names not name so now you can see that i am giving i am getting the value i am getting the table so that is how again we can very well read the file one more interesting command we have i am not sure whether that will be beneficial for you or not this is my data frame now here you can see that order id furniture office supply technology now here you can see order id is there furniture office supply technology and these are the sales value now what i am looking for is what i am interested in is i want my table as order id category and sales order id this is my first order id let's say this order id is 1 so 1 categories furniture office supply and technology so here i will have 1 1 1 for office supply and technology and this corresponding sales will come here 43.54 54.66 are you understanding it so basically we are transposing it here i have only 1 2 3 4 rows now it will become 4 into 
12 rows. Every order ID will have three rows. One for furniture, one for office supply, and one for technology. Okay. And for that, there is a command called melt. So, bf dot melt id vars order id i want to do the transpose against order id comma where name i want to give the variable name as category and value name value name will be sales And now let me execute this. You can see that I am getting the output. And I have 12 records starting 0th index to 11. So here I have order ID, furniture. So this order ID is 65454. 65454. 65454. Three entries I have. Same way 54332. 54332. 54332. And so on. Okay, so that is how we can do this. This is a melt command. Now one more interesting thing we will do. I think uh, this may be your use case. I have this data frame. I have gender, age, and color. Just a random column I have created. Now what I want is I want to make this male as M, female as F. So I will say DF gender letter is equal to df dot gender dot map what i want i'm passing a dictionary male i want it as m and female i want it as f and now when you check this df you can see that i have a new column coming in which is a gender letter wherever you are finding male it is making it as m and wherever you are finding female you see it's coming as f also if you see here age let's say i want to write a logic that if your age is greater than 18 then only you will able to vote greater than equal to 18 then only you will able to vote so what i want is i want to write a logic and I want to create a new column. That new column should tell me that whether the person is able to vote or not. Right. So here I will write df can vote is equal to. So I'm creating a new column called can vote. And we have df dot age column. dot s type i will convert this to first of all integer because we passed it as a string if you see at the top i passed the numbers as string so i'm converting to integer greater than equal to 18 and now you can see that a new column is created which is can vote and giving me the output if your age is less than less than or uh, less than 18 then your vote will be false you cannot you cannot uh, vote basically if your age is 18 or above you can say yes true you can able to vote okay so that is how some logic building we can do as well
Now, one more thing we can do. Let's say I have a tips data. I'm not sure we have created. No, let me create one. PD dot read CSV. Let's say tips one dot CSV. And here I have tips. I'm giving the alias as tips, the data frame name. I want to know the cumulative sum. I want to know the cumulative sum. Cumulative sum is basically 16.99, right? So the first record will be 16.99. Second record will be 16.99 plus 10.34. Third record will be 16.99 plus 10.34 plus 21.01. Fourth record will be 16.99 plus 10.34 plus 21.01 plus 23.68, like that. It is a cumulative sum. I want to create a new column and do the cumulative sum. So let me give the name as running total is equal to tips dot total bill dot come sum. Cumulative sum. Let's execute this. And now, when you check the tips, you can see that a new column is created, which is giving me the cumulative sales total bill. Cumulative total bill. So you can see that just with a few commands, we are able to do that. Okay. Now let's say one one more interesting thing we will solve. Let's let's do that. I have a data frame. Here, if you check my data frame, you can see that I have a data frame with order ID. I have manufacturer and I have ship mode. Now, can I say this ship mode is basically a what do you say? Having a rank. It has a rank, right? Basically, the same day is a best. If my data, my uh, product is coming in same day, then it's a best. If my product is coming in first class, then second best. If the product is coming in second class, then third best. Standard class is the last. So it's like an ordinal data. I have some orders in there, right? Where same day is the best and standard class is the worst. Something like that. I want to give the rank. I want to give the rank. I want to tell Python that this is how the story is. So I will import from pandas dot API dot types import categorical D type, categorical data type. I'll create a new variable type is equal to Categorical D type standard class is my lowest, then second class, then first class, then same day.
and now what i will do is df ship mode is equal to df dot ship mode dot s type type now i have this data frame if i go and check the info you will see this is what we are getting and the data type is category and if i check only ship mode column you can see python is now understood that there are four categories standard class second class first class and same day four categories are there now what will be the benefit of this let's say df dot sort values ship mode ascending equal to true ascending equal to true so you see standard class is coming first then second class then first class then same day so now in the categorical data also we can able to do the sorting for example let's say ascending equal to false now you can see same day coming first then first class then second class then standard class so now it is very much considered as a, a, a rank you can say right rank it's rank now for example let's say i want all the records greater than second class so all the records greater than second class are first class and same day So df df dot ship mode greater than second class. You can see something is wrong here. Ship mode. I think there is some issue there. Okay, one thing we missed is that here when we are writing type, right? Here I can write after the bracket ordered equal to true. Now, when you run this command, you can see that it will help me understand. Standard class is less than, second class is less than, first class is less than, same thing. Now I can run this command and you can see that I'm getting all the first and same day data. It will show me all the categories which are passing in the type. It will not show me in the data which is not present in my data set. Okay. So basically the purpose of this particular command is that when you have a categorical data, but it's a rank type of data, then it will be basically nothing but we can use this sort command and we can use this API categorical detail. Now let's say I have a tips and I want to hide this index. I don't want this index. I can hide that dot style. Dot hide index. You can see the index is no longer there. It's hidden. We can give some title as well. Let's say hide index. Then dot set caption. This is my tips data. You can see here I got the title also.
now someone asked me that how can we apply dollars and all in the data right in the initial days for example let's say i have a tips data and i want to apply dollar in total bill and tip dollar 16.99 dollar 1.01 like that i will create a dictionary i will create one dictionary bict is equal to curly braces total bill colon dollar i want to apply dollar again curly braces colon dot 2f dot 2f is two floating points i want my decimal only two comma on the tip column also i want to do the same thing i want to apply dollar and then any number before the decimal but after decimal point i should have only two floating points so dot i created this dictionary and now what i will do is i will write tips dot style dot format dictionary you can see that the value is with dollar right so we are now passing the dollar at the this thing what do you say column starting column one more interesting thing we can do let's say let me do one thing let me reduce the data so that it will make more sense in the steps data i will just take this much of data okay and let me import this data again pd dot read csv tips csv here is my data set let me save it in tips tips now what i want is i want to highlight the minimum and the maximum value of my total bill the minimum value is 8.77 the maximum value is 25.29 so minimum is 8.77 maximum is 25.89 this is what i want to highlight let's apply tips dot style dot format i will use dictionary also which will give me dollars dot hide index i want to hide the index also dot highlight minimum i want to highlight the minimum total bill and i want to highlight with red color dot highlight maximum and i want to highlight again total bill with green color done you can see that the highlighting happened on the minimum and the maximum okay one more interesting thing is let's say i want to highlight this entire total bill column i want to know which is the highest sales with a darker green color which is the lowest sales with a lighter green color something like that so what i'll do is i'll copy all the same there will not be much change here i'll just make after hide index let's say i don't want this entire thing i'll remove this and i'll say that background gradient subset i want to do for total bill and i want in a green color so color map as c map as greens you see here i am getting the shade of green 
this is the lightest green because the value is very less this is the darkest green because the value is very high so now i did the shading let's see can we have multiple columns so if i'll put square bracket delete and here i'll say i want for tip also let's see yes it is working fine absolutely same way i can do for size also it's a numerical column so i want to do for numerical column so for size also i can do perfect so that is how you can apply the formatting this will highlight that how things are we can create the bars also in place of this background gradient what i want is i don't want this background gradient in fact i want what i want a bar bar on total bill and i want to give the color as green and also i want to align or oh, let's execute this we'll see what happens you can see the bar is coming up bigger the bigger the value bigger the bar is you can see the bar is big smaller the value you can see almost zero again can we apply on multiple columns total bill on tip and you can see that here the behavior is the same 4.71 is the highest tip so you see it's a bigger bar same way i can do for the size as well obviously it's not looking better as compared to the previous one there yeah, this is the option also we have but this looks better as compared to this one okay so that is how we can play around with pandas so these are like some of the important steps which we which i wanted to discuss on pandas and i hope many of the use cases may be very much useful for multiple color we cannot give because here i am giving the c map as green that's why multiple colors you want then you can directly go and create the visualization i think that will be the better option for us rather than uh, using this because here it is just taking the category and doing the shading right but let's say you want multiple color then how will you say total bill that value which is 16.99 i want red color it, it will be difficult for us to code Alrighty. Now, I will talk about one of the charts which is known as box and discuss plot. I'm not sure how many of you guys know box and discuss plot. So box and whisker plot is like one of the interesting plots. Which helps me understand how my data is, but how my data is distributed also. Let me open one PPT. I'll try to explain through that presentation. And I hope that like are you guys aware of box and whisker plot? First of all, that is my question. No color we cannot save in original Excel. I don't think so. Because this formatting is let let's try that. It's a good question. Let's try that. But I don't think so it will be possible. Uh, let me save it in DF. 
logically it not make sense me sense, sense to me that it should get imported but let's see that if it's possible Let's go to the location. Here we go. Multiple files out. Okay, it's working. I was also not aware of that. Cool. So you can see it is exported with color also. All right, beautiful. Now, Box and whisker plot, are you guys aware of? How to hide index while exporting? You can hide through this only. Uh, how to hide index? There is one command. Let me think about it. While exporting. I think we can do something like index call or something. I'm not able to recollect as of now. Maybe I can let you know later on. I think drop index or something can be done, I guess. There are a lot many commands, so I'm not able to. It's in my mind, but not coming up now. Okay, that's fine. I'll put that in group here. Yeah. I'm not able to recollect. But here, when we exported this table, this one here, hide index is there, but index is coming. Okay, that's fine. Okay, how many of you guys know box and whiskers plot? Any of you guys know? Maybe you guys can say that as candlestick chart or something. Not sure that is what we say. This type of plot. But I think you should aware of this. So this is like very important plot for us at least. We did a lot of data analysis using this. And here is the plot basically. So this plot is basically helping me understand how my data is distributed. So this is my outliers, which is very rare in number. 
those are my outliers and this is my median line the let's say consider that this is my data set so in this data set what is my median the median is nothing but middle number right so here i have one two three four five six seven so one two three four twenty four is my median now this line is nothing but median so for example basically the purpose of this plot is how my data is distributed for example let's say we all gave the exam and uh, we gave all the exam we all gave the exam and we all got 30 marks out of 100 only a few people got 90 marks so if i try to create a curve it will be something like this where majority of the people are at 30 so if i try to create a box and whisker plot the median will be at the lower side right this line this line will be at the lower side because the majority is at the lower side same way let's say we gave the exam again and all got 90 only few got 30 so now the chart will be something like this now here majority of the people are at this position so my median will be at the higher side so basically it is helping me understand that how my data is distributed if the median is at the center that means it is evenly distributed evenly normally distributed okay now that is one of the one of the use case of this plot second is finding the outliers outliers are nothing but the very rare in number for example let's say i have an insurance company and i want to launch an insurance uh, product for my customers but now that product which i am launching is for the young kids and my customers are from uh what do you say 20 years to 90 years and as i mentioned my product is for the small kids so obviously people with the age of let's say 25 to 45 may be interested in that product because their kids will be uh, smaller and they want this type of product and something like that now I have very few customers with 90 years of age, very few. So obviously I will not consider them because obviously their age is very high already. And they are like, they don't have small kids, so they may not very much interested in the product. So these are my outliers right and i can remove them because they are very rare in number so these are nothing but my outliers there is a formula for outlier it's an industry standard formula which can be changed as per the requirement so first of all this is known as median and also known as quartile 2 q2 so basically i can say that 50 percentile of my data is present here 50 percentile of my data is still here this is my 50 percentile data this start of the box is known as q1 quartile one so from the start of the point till here it is 25 percentile data 
from the start of the box till this orange line is 50 percentile data from the start of the box till the end of the boxes like start of the point till end of the boxes 75 percentile data and from the start of the line till end of the line is 100 percentile data so basically this box and whisker plot is dividing the data into four equal parts now there is a formula for uh, outlier this is my q1 this is my q3 this is my q2 and there is a concept of inter quartile range iqr there is a concept of inter quartile range which is nothing but q3 minus q1 there is a concept of inter quartile range which is nothing but q3 minus q1 q3 minus q1 formula for outlier is q1 minus 1.5 into iqr which is interquartile range and higher side outlier are q3 plus 1.5 into iqr any value which is less than this is an outlier any value which is greater than this is an outlier let's do the calculation you can see that here is the calculation any value which is less than 18.5 is an outlier and any value which is greater than 30.5 is an outlier so basically these are my outliers right so basically the purpose of this plot is to one is to understand how my data is distributed and second is finding the outliers in my data set these two things are the uh, are the basically usage of this particular plot heavily used people are using it a lot let's say i have a tips data i want to create a box and whisker plot on this total bill so i will import my c bond so import c bond as sns sns dot box plot data is equal to tips and my x is equal to let's say total bill let's see whether it is working again something is happening and this is actually i did wrong it will hang yeah so now here is my data set and you can see that the plot is created and from here i can clearly see that the median is at the higher side so if i try to create a bell curve it will be something like this median is at the higher side okay that we can see from the data also whether it is correct or not we already know the data so my data is tips you can see that majority of the data is around 20s only right so it's around 20s so that is how we can create a box and this can i can have let's say y also y is equal to let's say sex i want to make it for male and female so you can see two plots coming in one for male and second for female if you want a vertical you can make sex as x and total bill as y that is also so you can see i can very well say here that the women's data is the female's data is normally distributed because the median is at the center but here in the men's data the data is something like this right majority of the data is around 20s very less data is here because median is here 
median is here that means obviously at the higher side same way there is one more plot which is exactly same as box and whisker which is known as sns dot violent plot violent plot gives me the same idea let me copy this part you can see that it is almost the same idea here it is also giving me the you, you can see it's like a curve only how my data is distributed it's a curve i told you that my female data is normally distributed you can see that it is normally distributed so it is giving me the distribution and also giving me the width the width, the width means majority of the values are here here the width is more so majority of the values are here right so this plot can also be used in place of box and whisker but box and whisker is more popular as compared to the violent plot okay is this clear to all of you guys All right, so this is about the data visualization. We can export the chart by right clicking. We can right click on this, you can save the image, and you can copy that and keep it. That way, we can. Okay, so I hope this is clear to all of you. Pandas, which is an important concept, we spent a lot of time there. We did a lot of, we did try to solve a lot of use cases, which may be useful for your day-to-day -day work. We spoke about data visualization as well, and we covered majority of the things. This is what I have for this entire session of five days. I hope it was. Obviously, we had less time, but. I tried my level best to cover majority of the things which you may use in your day to day work. So here I stop and hand over to the admin. Adunika course is not very much extensive. But yeah, if you want to learn Python, then you can connect with me on that. You can have some sessions on that. Book name, I'll share one books. I, I'll share one book and I'll share some videos as well so that you can if you have interest now, obviously. And as I mentioned, right, we will basically have the discussion on some of the apps which we can use right streamlet and all those things you can use once you can connect me offline we can we can discuss about the requirement and then we can maybe create a good app which can be used by all of you guys in your day to day work and i think it's simple i don't think that creating the app will be difficult I just want to know the logics which you want. Like some of the logics we did cover in the class, right? For example, pen card validation and some more example we discussed, right? Text validation and all. Okay. This course is mostly on the data analytics front. This is not on the website. Website thing is another topic altogether, another, I would say, interface altogether. If you want to create an app, then Streamlit is the good one. 
it's a new package in the market people are still exploring it so you guys can also explore and as i mentioned if you guys want to create some apps you can connect with me and we can create the apps so it will be learning experience for me as well right so maybe you can decide whatever whoever, whoever are interested to interested to work on some apps of ca then maybe you can ask shweta to create a group for that and we can have a discussion on it weekly basis and we can create some apps for you guys right which can be deployable maybe we can deploy in some of the websites like maybe we can purchase some domain and we can deploy that and you can use that or i have my domain i can deploy there and you guys can use that and we can make it more uh, advanced as in when, like again those guys who are interested can only contact me because if interest is there then only we will able to do something good right so still we can make lot of things automated using python for cas right so why not let's do it i have my team maybe we can assign some tasks to my team and then those guys can work on your requirement and that will be the learning experience for you guys and for them also all right so definitely if you guys are interested then please connect with me we'll create a group we'll create a team and we'll try to come up with something good okay all right so here i stop any questions you have you can ask else shweta over to you Are you there? Yes. So this is what I have. So we can conclude the session. My audio. Yeah, yeah. There is a network problem from my side, so I'm not. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, fine. If it is done, so we can use it. I mean. Okay. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, uh, there is a lot of network. See you. Even my webcam and mic. So maybe it's working or not. I'm not sure. I'm not able to hear you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thanks guys, and I hope you like the session. We'll see you again for sure, maybe with some other sessions. And again, because of the time constraint, and I'm, I know that you guys are from non-technical background. That's why I was not getting into much detail, much technical. But yeah, at least you are unable to play around with Python. I saw that people are very much interested. So we can definitely connect and maybe we can do something. Thanks a lot. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Rahul. Thanks, Shweta. So session will be closed from your side because uh, you are the organizer, no? Yeah, I'm doing it. Okay.